So we've come to the end of our sessions on investment protection. And in this session, in conclusion, we essentially deal with the dispute resolution mechanisms available for a investor of a qualifying investment. So we obviously discussed in the past few sessions what is a qualifying investor, what is a qualifying investment, uh, what protections are available for those invest investments. Also, not just through BITs, but also through domestic legislation to investment agreements that has been negotiated with the particular host government. So now there's a dispute. So what is the entitlement of the invest in that instance? So the in most instances, if you look at BITs, it provides for an investor state arbitration process. So what, that, what does that mean? Investor state arbitration is essentially where the investor is entitled to take a state to an investment uh, tribunal or investment arbitration tribunal. You can distinguish between exit uh, investment tribunals and, and non-exit tribunals. So an exit tribunal, tribunal depends on whether the particular host government is also a member of exit or the exit convention and if a member of the exit convention uh, the process is then dictated by the exit convention in terms of how uh, to lodge a, ultimately a dispute under a treaty and what is the process to qualify for the um, protection under the exit convention from a dispute resolution perspective. So the ultimate consequence of an exit arbitration is that once an arbit arbitral award is rendered by the tribunal that has been constituted, it is final and binding on the host government. Uh, the host government cannot challenge that arbitral award in its own domestic courts. Uh, it's obliged to comply with that. Uh, the only other option is obviously to proceed with an annulment process against the, for whatever basis set out in the, con the exit convention um, on the arbitral award that was rendered by the tribunal. A non-exit arbitration is essentially once an arbitration award is awarded also basically under the um, treaty and uh, the provisions of the treaty. Uh, once the arbitral award is rendered, um, the enforceability thereof can be challenged by the host state in its own um, courts where it can approach its own court saying that a particular arbitral award it was awarded by the arbitral tribunal should not be enforceable in that state. It doesn't mean of the, the award is not enforceable in any other jurisdiction. If the courts of the particular host state decides that the arbitral award should not be enforced based on whatever specific requirements set out in, in the New York Convention, um, that arbitral award might not be enforced in the host government from a political perspective but that award would still be enforceable in any other jurisdiction and uh, importantly can only be set aside in the jurisdiction where the award was rendered. So principally we've just set out what the dispute resolution mechanisms um, are in place in investment treaties. Uh, these, this is obviously not an exhaustive discussion. There's also a number of issues we can still dis discuss, which is parallel proceedings, fork in the road provisions. But for purposes of the uh, series, it's outside the scope of our discussions. Um, and hopefully what we've done is we've given you over the past few weeks, we've given you an insight on the investment protection mechanisms available to investors of qualifying investments in respect of um, the investments in a particular jurisdiction and what the risk mitigation measures are in place prior to making an investment decision, including of the, the dispute resolution mechanisms in place in um, investment treaties or investment agreements or in some instances domestic legislation.